You cannot defeat the cube. <laughs> anyway, ah, let's go back to normal. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's start with the scripting. One of the ways that you can approach it, and the way that I approached it when I first started scripting within Blender, is to mimic the UI. It's very simplistic doing it that way, and you can often end up writing a script that will help you out, especially if you repeat the same operations over and over again. In order to do this, let's go over to the scripting workspace. So at the top of the screen here, I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll along, we have scripting. If we go there, we've got one large area where we'll be typing our code in a moment. Then we've got the 3D viewport, the Python console, and the info editor as well. The info editor doesn't have its header there at the moment, but that's the type of um, editor window that it is. Okay, and we can see there, just revealing the header and putting it back again, we get an operation as to what's happened within Blender. These are incredibly useful, but not all operations will appear there which is unfortunate, but that is the case. And some of them are context sensitive, so they will be dependent on where your cursor is. So you can't 100% rely on what appears in this window, but it's a good starting point for all of the basic operations. Let's actually get rid of the Python console for the moment so we can see more of what's happening. Go over to the 3D viewport. Let's move it with the G key, move it over here. Let's rotate it and let's scale it. And then let's delete it. And look at that. We've got a ton of stuff coming up here. Now, if we were to copy that and paste it into the Python console, that we've removed or put it in a script, it's likely that all of those operations would actually happen. We wouldn't see it, it would be so quick, and then we'd end up with a blank scene. So we've sacrificed our default cube, how do we go ahead and bring it back? Well, let's go ahead, shift and A, add in a cube. And we can see here, we've got bpy.ops.mesh, so it's a slightly different namespace from before, dot primitive underscore cube underscore add and then we've got some parentheses and we have some parameters now the parameters will vary and those aren't all of the parameters available later on we'll have a look uh, perhaps not in this video but we'll have a look at using the python console to see what other parameters are available to us by default things like the number of rings and i can't remember what the other one's called let's have a look uh, rings and segments in a uv sphere would also appear here but you can see this is a very cut down version we only have its radius which is useful um, but not if you want to add some extra segments. You can probably guess that it says segments equals 32, rings equals 16, or something along those lines. Anyway, sidestepping just a little, we've got all of the information we need here in order to create a cube. So let's go over to the text editor, click new, and give this a name. Uh, you could call it first script, you could call it whatever you want, uh, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to call this cube resurrection and then i'm going to save it which is under the text menu save as i've already got a folder here blender scripts cube resurrection save so we're there aren't we let's go ahead grab a bit of code from over here which was the oh where's it gone now primitive cube add this one here let's copy that and paste it over here are we done well let's hit play and see no we've got a red warning at the bottom and also over on the info editor as well python script has failed check the message in the system console now this may catch some of you out the system console it can be found if you've launched blender from a terminal or if we go to the window and toggle system console then when we have a look at this we can see everything that's happened if we move the right window here we go so we've started Blender and we are ready to go. And then we've deleted an object, we've deleted an object, and then we've tried to run our script. And this is the error here. We've got a name error. The name BPY is not defined. Now, often when something is a name error, BPY not defined, that means we've not imported the BPY namespace. So the Python doesn't really know what to do. All we need to do here is add a few lines at the top, well, we don't have to add a few lines, but that white space there helps us out. And we need to import BPY. Now, if we go ahead and save 
Take note here that saving is Alt and S, not Control and S. Control and S will save your main file. Interesting, that's what caused Blender to crash last time. Hmm. I found a bug that's reproducible. Excellent. I shall report that and I'll see you back in a few moments. Okay, so I have reopened Blender here. Uh, let's not save it for the moment. I do believe that happens to be a bug. Let's see if we can open up what we had before. No, no, it's not there at all. Okay, so what we had there before, and I will rely on, sorry, I'm jumping about here. Um, I will rely on it being saved in with the Blender file itself rather than having any extras. And to make sure that it is there, I'm gonna automatically pack into the Blend file so that anything within this Blender file will be within the Blender file itself. So no external dependencies. So let's delete the cube, add it back in. Okay, we've got our bpy.ops mesh primitive cube add. We're gonna copy that, create a new script. I'm gonna still call it cube resurrection and I'm gonna paste that in. And what we were just discussing before it crashed was we need to import bpy. Then when we go ahead and run our script, we can see in the outline that it's added an extra cube. And if we continue pressing that, it'll add cube and cube and cube. So let's delete everything from our scene, press the play button or alt and p that will also run the script again. And there we go. We have successfully managed to create a script that will resurrect our cube for us. That's absolutely brilliant. Of course, you can do this with any other object. So if instead of having primitive cube add, we could have something else. But how do you find out what those extra things are? And what about the parameters that you can put in here? Well, here comes the extra credit part of this lesson. So we don't need anything in these parentheses. In this particular case, it will still add the cube with the default settings, which is what we had there anyway. However, if we wanted it to be a larger cube, again, this is something that sometimes annoys me. Our cursor has to be over here in this window. And of course we can't see everything else at the moment. Let's bring that back. Now, if I said size, equals, oh, let's say five. Now when I run it, we get a bigger cube in. So you can add some of these parameters. Some of them are optional, some of them are not. So down in the Python console, now we've got this back. I'm gonna show you it in this part. So we've got bpy.ops.mesh primitive cube add. Now, if we start typing in here, you'd have thought it would have reacted straight away to what we needed to do, but unfortunately not. We do need to still import BPY before we get started. Now we can go BPY dot, and we can use the tab key to see what else we can use. And we know it's going to be ops, so we can go dot, and then we get a big long list. We know it's going to be mesh, and then we know it's going to be primitive, probably. But let's see what else we have here. Wow, look at all of these options. Now, some of this will be part of add-ons that are turned on, and some of them will just be other things that you can add. So I can add an icosphere. So let's add an icosphere, no, a UV sphere. I was talking about a UV sphere earlier with the number of rings and segments it could have. So UV, here we go. We've got all of the extra options now that we can see. And let's make this area larger so we can see a lot more. UV sphere add is the command, which is brilliant. Then segments equals 32. Ring count. Now I guessed rings earlier, not the case in this case. Uh, radius, calculate the UVs, true. So it'll automatically generate a UV map for it. Enter edit mode false. You could set that to true if you wanted to. Align your view, to the align it to the world, its location, its rotation. And there we go. That's how you find out the extra parameters that you might need as well. And I hope you found that really useful, especially if you're new to scripting in Blender. Now this is just baby steps, but I do want to take it baby steps because it can get very complex very quickly. And I don't want to lose people because I really want you to enjoy scripting within Blender and really increase your productivity by writing your own little scripts. You can have lots of fun with it. I've even made a Mayan pyramid just using uh, a little script like this and a for loop. And we'll get to those sorts of things coming up. They're very straightforward, but we need to introduce them gently as we go forward, especially if you're new to coding. 
And that's it. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, hit that like button. I'll be producing more of these in this series, so subscribe so you can see more, and I'll see you all in that next video. Take care.